Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about heat, recovery, steam, generator. So let's dive right into it. Now, why exactly we need something like that, heat, recovery and blah, blah, blah. Well, reality is that we have a need for it. It's not that oh, it's a nice to have. No, we need it. Why? Every time we use high intensity heat, either for power generation or for metallurgical purposes, generally, uh, that puppy is extremely wasteful. What kind of waste we are talking about? Basically, if your fuel had, let's say, X amount of energy, flat out, bye-bye 50% of it. Like it had X and you're like, yeah, X by half is the only work you can get. out, And that's being optimistic. Realistically, you may not even get that. To give you an example, your cars barely give you 25 to 35%. So that even, even if you're getting 50%, that's mind-bogglingly awesome. So that's the reality. We have so much energy here. We don't need free energy. If we can just utilize majority of it, we cannot achieve 100%. Let me be very clear. Unless your job is to just to heat a room, you cannot achieve 100% work out of it. So you have to have some waste heat, but the percentage can be changed. Percentage can go from, let's say, 10% to as high as 50, 60, 70, or whatever have you. It can change. So 50% of energy is just waste heat at this point in time. And fuel prices are rising year over year, meaning this is a very old graph and it shows a very good perception. Uh, in year 2002 in India, uh, petrol price was around 26 rupees litre. It sounds bonkers to people like me, but like that was the fact, 26 rupees litre. Uh, by the year 2012, by around 10 years, this puppy became 68.5. Today's price, this looks free. Right now, I'm paying at least 100, in some places more than 110. So the, even this is one, that's the whole fact. Reality is that fuel prices are always going up. Whenever you hear about things now, like, uh, oh, crude oil prices are coming down, those are short terms. Those are like, you know, short term here, like it went to 50, it went to 40. Those are short term. When you zoom out, like you really pull out from a person point of view, from a person uh, as in running a company, from running a corporation, you will always find it, the price is constantly going up. There is never a point where it's like price like actually went down. It's like always going up. So that's why like zoom out, like look from 1950s, you will always find price going up always either from its own supply and demand cycles or uh, inflation. So it will always become more and more and more expensive. So if you are a plant operator and you are like, hey, I'm just wasting energy. What happens if I don't waste? Uh, what if I extract some work out of this puppy? More fuel efficiency. You are not becoming energy efficient. You are becoming fuel efficient, meaning how much work you are getting out of your fuel, it's increasing. What does that mean for you? More profit. And this is one uh, critical aspect of it. Nobody cares about environment. And we, we cannot, we simply cannot. We evolve from uh, like, you know, survival mechanism. So fundamentally, we do not have that kind of spare capacity. But we care about profit. Profit means your life becomes better. So everybody wants to do it. This puppy makes your life better. And the consequence of that is environmentally conscious, meaning a company, let's say General Electric is like, hey, we have co-generation power plant that utilizes this technology and it uh, is like, you know, saves fuel. That's how they're going to sell it to basically a consumer who's going to buy it and how they're going to sell it to public. Public is like, hey, very energy efficient, less carbon footprint for more megawatt hours. Awesome. So both people are happy. And that's what you ideally want. You want everybody to be happy. It's like what you want, you get it. What you want, you get it. You never go, it's like, sacrifice for this. Nobody's gonna do it. But you're like, hey, what if you do it? Of course, increases your capital cost, but improves your running cost and profit. So that's why we need it. Now, thankfully, it's an ancient technology, as in like even India's Farka uh, gas power plant had it for like, if I'm not mistaken, 1997. So it's a old technology. Heat recovery steam generator. Now, heat is just, it is a heat exchanger for waste heat. That's all you have to understand here. And it creates steam. What you do with that steam, that's up to you. For some scenarios, they just need heating. That steam is directly used as heating. Some scenarios, you could be very lucky where you need that steam for processing metallurgy or whatever have you. Voila. And sometimes you're just like, hey, I need power out of it. There is no point of like, uh, let's say in India, we do not have uh, district heating. So that heat recovery is not something that we can pipe into something. We are like, we have to use convert it. So at that point, we make it into power. So instead of having just 100 megawatt, you can get 140 megawatts out of it. Same amount of fuel consumption. That's why we love it. So some example, common jet engines that are used for power production generally run on CH4. Gas power plants generally are CH4 jet engines, methane jet engines, 
uh, LNG jet engines, whatever have you. They are just jet engines. So th these puppies exhaust is still hot. It's 600 degrees Celsius hot. And again, at ideal best scenario, you can achieve 45% kind of efficiency. Now, like, why the heck it still has temperature if you already extracted so much work out of it? You have to understand how jet engine works or almost all combustion works. You have air coming in, compressed, awesome. Now you put fuel in and you burn it. It dumps exothermic energy into that. What happens? Two things. Your pressure rises and your temperature. Now, turbines are awesome at extracting pressure. Meaning you put 10,000 PSI, they're like, bro, I got this. They can leach 100% energy out of it. Not 100%, you get the point. Like you can leach almost 99% energy out of it. The pressure could be dropped to uh, almost ambient level or even vacuum level. Happens in steam turbine where you have like 1,500 uh, bars going in and then the output is like partial vacuum. So you can get a lot of energy in terms of pressure. But here's the deal. What happens to temperature? Nothing. Temperature does drop, of course, in the combustion changer is very hot, like around 1500 degrees Celsius up to, uh, ideally it will be running at like 700 or 800 if they want to run it for very long duration continuously. So you have very uh, little temperature drop, but you have exponential pressure drop, but you still have heat left and that's the waste heat we are talking about. So it's still useful because you can understand if you have 600 degrees Celsius hot water, uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So you have more than enough 500 degrees Celsius temperature delta more than enough. Then you are talking about metal processes. Many steel plants have a uh, waste exhaust that is still at 400 degrees Celsius. Still you have 300 degrees Celsius temperature delta, more than enough. And uh, many times in OPEC nation where they have GG amounts of oil and do not have to worry about it, they use that oil to run power plants. Awesome. But here's the, after they run the power plants, they are like, we have waste heat. We have shortage of water, but we are next to a sea. What if we do water distillation, desalination, and that's how they get water supply. Again, be mindful, this is not something that can be done for majority of the places. Unless you are running on nuclear, in every other scenarios, the cost will become so high that nobody's gonna buy the water from you. So again, in OPEC nations, they have no other choice, so they do it, but uh, for don't expect like Japan to do it. Japan did try to do it, but with nuclear, they did it. And uh, if India tries to do it, it can be done. Let me be very clear, physics, engineering, economics. Physics is there, uh, engineering is already sorted. It's just the economics part does not make sense. That's why not everybody does, uses water desalination. However, power is very easy to sell. Even if you are in the middle of desert, uh, what do you want to sell to copper? Like again, you built a plant. What's this plant's a primary selling point? Power. Imagine, hey, uh, I put a 100 megawatt generator. What if I give you 125 megawatt? What if I give you 150 megawatt and same fuel consumption? Everybody is like, shut up and take my money. That's what we are achieving here. And again, temperature is already there. Imagine if you are doing this on a metal plant, you can be like, hey, what if you produce the same amount of steel while reducing your fuel consumption, while increasing your profit? People do it. That's the whole point. Heat recovery from uh, steam generators. So how the heck this puppy is actually built? Well, it's super simple. It's control C, control V of uh, basically coal boilers. So water flows counter to the gas flow. Basically gas grows from super hot around 600 degrees Celsius to ambient. Ambient is around let's say 100 degrees Celsius or 150 as in ambient of this exhaust, not ambient of outside air. So that's the gas flow and water flows counter to it. So water will be cold, warm, hot. So that's how it does. And ideally they will have three sections, not necessary depending on the money you spent, depending on the size you have. You may have only one section or you may have all three. So you will have high pressure section, intermediate pressure section and low pressure section. So LP, IP and HP. So you have three sections of here. Now each of these sections are generally can be treated as a custom module. Like it's a completely enclosed system. So it has a drum on top. Generally there will be a drum on top and then you have economizer. Economizer, basically, they, you never want to try directly try to boil, uh, you know, basically ambient water into steam, hot steam. That's not, not efficient. So you use the cold area, basically. Temperature is dropping from hot to cool here. So you use this area, cool area, basically you're dumping the heat. Basically, the temperature delta from cold water could be, let's say, 30 degrees Celsius. And the water, uh, the hot gas here could be as low as 100 degrees Celsius. So that's easy. That's gentle on the metal tubes. So you're like gently bringing the temperature on. You're cooling the exhaust, you are warming the water up, then that warm water goes into evaporator where you actually convert it into steam. So you have evaporator, awesome, now you have steam, then you send that steam to superheater. Basically, you start to come closer to this. Why? Uh, superheater is generally there to remove any amount of moisture. Basically, there will always be water droplets there. So you want to superheat that, basically cook it. So there is not even a single trace of uh, water droplets or uh, like, you know, moisture. It is raw, pure steam 
that's superheater then you send it to turbine turbine runs through then again uh, majority of the tur pressure would be extracted by the uh, basically turbine but you still have heat so you send it to reheater so if any condensation did happen because we can pressure drop does rate to temperature drop so if you had any uh, basically condensation happen reheater will make it pure again and then you repeat the cycle how do you drive this from these three sections to turbine you can directly link them as like one giant pipe or you can have like each section feeding a dedicated section of turbine you have a turbine basically low pressure feeding low pressure mid pressure feeding mid pressure and high pressure feeding high pressure you can do that that's up to you now tubes are the critical part of it many time when you see tubes in uh, coal boilers even though coals are much hotter the tubes are much simpler why they are designed to extract energy from a wall basically there is a wall and fire is happening in between and it's radiating basically majority of the energy is being carried by photons so they have like very thick inside and be mindful the temperature is much hotter so if they put it tubes directly in the flame line there is a very good chance it's going to melt even if you have water flowing through it so they a majority of heat is, is extracted directly from the walls here you are putting directly in the dirty air so these things have fins again without fins they will not be able to dump uh, enough of the temperature so you can have 600 degrees celsius and here it still would be 500 degrees celsius that's why they need fins uh, so solid fin design and uh, Started fin designs. I have not seen any video of anybody actually using the solid fin. I think this was old design, but you can find still find it. But this I have seen. I have linked videos on below. So this fin actually dumps the heat. Basically, 600 degrees Celsius drops to a very simple. Size. So it's just a giant unit. Be mindful, it is huge because again the hot source is not actually super hot. It is very huge units size wise be mindful you have to make sure that you do not create back pressure on the jet engine jet engine has already extracted the pressure so you cannot create a scenario where you have pressure drop so it always has to expand so it will start small big big even big and then you have a final giant chimney like if you have jet engine directly going out the chimney would be very small but if you have jet engine like expanded so much energy and you drop the temperature to make sure that you do not have backflow the chimney would be thick so that's the design aspect of it then we come to the add-on parts. It's not just like you have that. You can do many things more to it. For example, this is the best place for emission control. When you are burning hydrogen or uh, hydrocarbon, specifically methane, you still have dirty products. For example, you can still have carbon monoxide. You can still have NOx. These two puppies are dirty puppies. So you have ammonia grid. That ammonia grid is basically to reduce NOx into nitrogen and water. So you have a grid where you are, yes, that means this puppy consume ammonia as a constant. Basically, they have uh, 10 shipments of, uh, let's say, gas, and then they'll have one shipment of ammonia. It does consume, and not that much, but it does need ammonia consumption. And you need catalytic uh, converter. If you thought catalytic converter of your car is heavy, this is a heavy boy. So this boy is, uh, basically oxidizes carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, so less toxic. So these two things are generally done in almost all plants to make sure the output is very clean. And be mindful, the source energy is al already clean. It's like CH4 is much cleaner compared to carbon. So they do not have to worry too much about sulfur and all that jazz or any. So that's why there are generally only two primary stages of air cleaning, whereas you have NOx reduction and you have CO2 redu uh, CO reduction. And sometimes you add a bypass vent. For example, if this is a plant where you need that heat, you are using that heat, but you will not put, install that by, uh, you know, bypass it. But if you are a power plant, where it's like, hey, I'm a natural gas power plant, you may be uh, stuck in a scenario where you have to be like, hey, you have to have very high on time. National grid is relying on you. So you have to have that on time. In those sort of scenarios, if you need to clean uh, basically this puppy, like, hey, what the hell are you going to do? You're going to shut down the generator? No, you can have a bypass duct, which has a secondary chimney, secondary silencer, and it just dumps that heat again. And you're still making 100 megawatts, but you are not getting that extra efficiency out of it. But it has to be done if your maintenance leads to downtime. So half profit versus downtime, half profit is better. So people have that bypass vent for maintenance and parallel use. Then we come to the duct burners. These are generally done for extra power. Now, why would you have fire running already on fire? Well, here's the uh, The steam cycle can easily absorb till 800 degrees Celsius. They can absorb that kind of heat. You're only getting maximum 600 degrees Celsius. That means there is 200 degree uh, Celsius temperature delta that you can add. That amount of heat you can add there. So you feed gases here and add that heat. Why? If these are generally done when you have peak power plant. Picker, this is a picker power plant, it's already running and you still have uh, basically frequency coming down, meaning uh, there is already load on the grid. So they're like, we need that extra oomph. These are generally done when you need that extra oomph. Uh, they are not designed, like it can be run 24 into 7 into 365, but they are not intended for that. It's like, just if you need that picker power, power time, it's like, hey, we need that extra 10%. This can give you that. So these are also add-on. Not every plant has this. Specifically, if the plant is focused on efficiency, they will not have this. Plant focused on peaker performance will have this. 
so or sometimes you may have a scenario where it's like hey we have this uh, metal furnace it would does work awesome but recovery heat is just not worth it you know it's just it's good but not that good in those sort of scenario be mindful temperature is one of those things that we need in deltas it even though grand total heat would be very little lighter but if temp it's like uh, using a transformer to make it more useful for you so that can be done and again low fuel cost more megawatts equal profit that's why people are investing on this and exhausts are surprisingly clean specifically once you go through that ammonia nox reduction its output is surprisingly clean so what we can expect in the future well here is more development of these things are and more and more deployment be mindful technology is not new it was there most people did not think too much about it now every tom dick and harry is like we got to add it peaker power plants they are generally designed for like you know just rough use now more and more of them coming online simply because of more and more solar more and more wind added wind energy added that's like creating a fluctuation in the grid so in those sort of time where like you know it's actually cost effective to add this unit to it and gas uh, power plant to metallurgical furnace is one of those things that we are adding more of it why gas power plants because again uh, right now we are in a scenario where we do not want to release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so ch4 has the benefit that majority of energy is being carried by hydrogen rather than carbon so emission per unit of electrical energy is much less compared to uh, basically carbon uh, coal so you can be looking at one unit of electricity coming from a gas power plant could be like 600 grams of carbon dioxide released and in terms of coal it could be 1 kilogram so that's why people are more forgiving of gas power plants rather than coal power plants so gas power plants are becoming more and more common so these puppies are getting manufactured like there is no tomorrow like even bigger units are being made like some of the jet engines are like 300 tons like whole jumbo jet is like bro i get this so these are big puppies metallurgical furnace we are our consum metal consumption is going up so that's also i think better pipe design again that specified pipe the biggest issue is that cleaning the damn thing everything else is we kind of sorted is just like how the heck you clean it so far there are only two ways of cleaning it first you have like a dry ice going pressure washing it or you could have just a boom device i'm not joking actual boom device going there fire in the hole boom and it gets shock enough where the pipes vibrates and then shakes out the dust linked video down below so cleaning them is a very big issue so better pipe designs and metallurgy so it can endure be mindful it's dealing with dirty air is dealing with hot exhaust is dealing with uh, basically noxes and it's dealing with uh, carbon monoxide so it is in a naughty place it's not a comfortable clean place so it does last now from a there is a pressure from market and government for pushing for efficiency again nobody gives a damn about the environment but everybody gives a damn about their pocket more efficiency equals better run out for example there have been many companies that did not install this they were like hey who cares but again fuel prices went up year by year and they are like oh damn at that point in time it's more expensive to add so it is a very uh, you know urgent kind of situation for government's point of view if a government is very serious for long term planning they are like dude let's enforce this every power plant even if they are saving specifically gas power plant saving even just as little as 10% 20% that's a lot because again here's the you and i are not going to russia and buying gas our nations are doing it and nations have limited supply basically of the currency of uh, political clout all that jazz and again there could be a physical supply limit so from a nation's point of view if they are like hey what if all our metal furnaces invest into this technology yes it will cost them we will give them some subsidies will help things out it will ready allows us to reduce our power consumption at least 10 to 20% what does that mean that simply means per ton of metal can be produced for cheaper you can sell it cheaper into the uh, international market so it's actually from a government point of view it's a wise investment you invest it it or reduces load on your grid it improves your environment as a by product so it's an awesome thing so more and more, again those gas balls they are awesome but they cannot hold uh, like gas infinitely so be mindful it's a limited resource and you just hope that next lng supply happens on the time if that messes up you will understand like those things do not last for very long time so this is the future we are looking at this is a basic technology which was developed very long ago but there was no like you know instant need for it now we have that instant need and countries that are pouring a lot of money into getting that getting the supply chain done having that system where by default by law installed in every system they're going to save serious amount of energy and even if the save of just 10% 10% of energy saving nationally means a lot 3 to 5% uh, metal cost reduction means a lot that's like they can compensate for inflation that's awesome so this is a good technology to have it's a good tool to help us uh, reduce our emissions 
So this was my presentation on waste heat, uh, you know, waste heat steam generator. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.